Okay, this video hopes to show you what use elasticity figures are, what use they can be put to, and what the limitations are on them. For any question on elasticity, you really need to be able to do four things. First of all, you need to be able to define the elasticity term that is being uh, questioned. Secondly, you must be able to do the calculation. Thirdly, you need to explain what the significance of the number that you have come up with is. And for this, you need to do two things. You need to always comment on the sign. Is it a positive or a negative number? And secondly, you need to comment on the size. Is the number greater than one or less than one? And finally, once you know what the number is and the significance, you need to say how useful would it be for a business? So you need to evaluate normally. You need to come up with ideas as to why it would be useful for a business. And then you need to know something about the limitations of using these figures for a business. Okay, the first elasticity you need to know something about <clears throat> is price elasticity of demand. So going through the four stages. The first stage is the definition. If you're asked to define price elasticity of demand, simply write the formula. Percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. It's very important. You must put the percentage figures in. Okay, let's take an example. Suppose last year that a, sh uh, a shop decreased the price of its Apple iPod Nano from £150 to £125. And as a result, sales of Nanos increased from 200 a week to 250. It's a typical sort of example you need to figure out. Okay, the second stage, you must be able to do the calculation. So, to calculate percentages, the method I use is the percentage is the difference over the original multiplied by 100. Difference over original multiplied by 100. So, the next thing to do is to make sure that you put the information in the formula the right way around. The worst thing you can do is to put it upside down. So, we want to work out the percentage change in quantity demanded. In this case, the quantity demanded went from 200 to 250. So the difference is plus 50 over the original, which is the number they sold to begin with, which was 200, and you multiply it by 100 to get the percentage. On the bottom, you have percentage change in price. This time, the price fell from 150 to 125. That is minus 25 over the original, which is your starting price, 150, multiplied by 100. If you work this out, 50 over 100 is the same as 1 over 4. So on the top, it is plus 25%. And on the bottom, it's, that's the same as 1 over 6, multiplied by 100, gives you minus 16.6%. Use a calculator, okay? Use a calculator. So, what does this number come out as? Well, to begin with, you work out the sign. You've got a plus and a minus, which gives you a minus. 25 divided by 16.6 is 1.5. So the answer is minus 1.5. The next thing you need to say is, well, what does this actually mean? Okay, what does this actually mean? So, you need to comment on the size and the sign. The first thing to do is to comment on the sign. For price elasticity of demand, the sign is always negative. As the price goes up, the quantity demand it goes down. So, for price elasticity of demand, and only price elasticity of demand, you ignore the minus sign. So, what we're left with then is a number 1.5. 1.5, we have to compare it to 1. It's greater than 1. Okay, 1.5 is greater than 1. So, we say that demand is elastic. Demand is elastic. What does this mean? Well, it means that demand is very responsive to a change in price. We've seen the price go down by 16%, but demand went up by 25%, a more than proportionate amount. 
So, demand in this case is elastic. You should know what determines whether demand is elastic or inelastic. And really, there are three things that determine whether demand is elastic or inelastic. The first is the availability of substitutes. With this figure of 1.5, I would imagine there are quite a few substitutes available. Because if the price went up, quantity demanded would fall by 1.5 times whatever the increase in price was. So there are lots of substitutes. The second thing is the proportion of your income which you spend on a good. This good, with an elastic demand, it's likely to take quite a large proportion of your income. And the third thing that determines it is the time period being considered. In the short run, you may have no alternative but to buy a product, so demand will be inelastic. But given time, you can find alternatives and it will become elastic. So, what use is knowing this? Moving on to the third bit. What use is knowing this figure to a firm? Well, knowing this figure can tell it three things. The first is, it will indicate, and only indicate, the number of substitutes. If it's elastic, more than one, then what we're likely to see is that there will be many substitutes. The bigger the number, the greater the substitute. So the more competitive the market. It tells the firm that it's operating in a market where there's a lot of competition. The second thing it tells them is what happens to its sales. For every 10% they put up the price, they're going to lose 15% of their sales. And the third thing is it shows them the link between uh, changing their price and changes in total revenue. To find out about that, watch the other video, which is dealing with the diagrams to deal with price elasticity of demand. So we know what use it could be to a firm. The last thing, and the thing that you'll get most marks for in the exam, is the evaluation part, okay, the evaluation part. You have to say why the firm should not place too much emphasis on the figure. I said at the beginning that this is what happened when they did it last year. So the question should be, what should the firm do now? Well, if demand is elastic, the obvious thing to say is reduce the price, they'll sell proportionately more, their total revenue will go up. But it happened last year. Things may have changed this year. If they try it again this year, maybe it will not be the same effect. Also, last year they might have got away with it, but this year if they do it, it may well be that other firms who sell nanos will retaliate and they'll reduce their price as well. If that happens, they'll end up saying a similar quantity but at a much lower price, which will not benefit them at all. You can also always question the figure. If you're given a figure, it will almost certainly say in the question that it is an estimate. And the question you've got to ask is, how good an estimate? How was the estimate uh, uh, arrived at? Was it done by market research? Would the market research have been large enough? Were enough people asked? Whether they were the right sort of people? And so you can criticise it on that grounds. The other thing to criticise is the idea that all other things remain unaltered. All we're doing is we're saying the price will change, quantity demanding will change, but all other things remain unaltered. That is highly unlikely to be the case. In the real world, things do not remain unaltered. And the last one is, if you're presented with data from the past, don't think that it will necessarily apply to the future, because once again, many, many things will have changed.